Welcome to Sean's Whiteboard. My name is Sean Siebold. I'm president of Siebold Capital Management, an independent fee-only wealth management firm serving individuals, families, and the businesses that they run. Today on the Whiteboard, I want to talk about two fundamental financial statements that are important to every financial planning engagement. They are the income statement and the balance sheet. Let's first look at the income statement. There are three primary sections in an income statement that we usually look at on a personal financial planning engagement. The first are wages. How much money comes in every month, uh, every year to a particular family. Then we break that down into some of the expenses. The expenses are broken down into two different categories. fixed expenses. These are things like mortgages, car payments, things that are not very easily changed in a very short period of time. And then you have variable expenses. Variable expenses are uh, expenses like vacations, uh, going out to dinner, uh, parties, uh, entertainment type expenses, things that you have a much more flexible uh, approach in terms of changing. Okay. Now, to finish the income statement, we take our wages or our income, subtract our fixed expenses, our variable expenses, and if with luck, we'll have a net income. That's positive. So this is the first part of a financial planning engagement, to find out where our income is, what we're spending it on. Then what we do is we move on over to the balance sheet. Now the balance sheet is made up of a couple of things. First, it's made up of assets. Assets are things like your house, your car, any investments you may have, a 401k, or perhaps an IRA. On the other side of the balance sheet, you have your liabilities. Liabilities are things that you owe, like mortgages, car payments, student loans, things like that. If you take your assets, subtract your liabilities, you get hopefully a positive net worth. Now in a financial planning engagement, some of the things that we look at pretty closely are, um, starting from the income statement, how large are the wages, and are typically is there one or two. When you have a two income household, your financial plan generally is much more stable um, because you have two incomes. If you lose one because of a loss of job or any other issue that may came up, you still have another income that, uh, that's coming in. Then we look at our fixed expenses. How large are our fixed expenses relative to our income? If we have very large fixed expenses, if we lose some of our wages, then we may have a problem with our financial plan. So the percentage of our fixed expenses relative to our income is another important consideration. The variable expenses, also we want to look at that relative to our wages. If that is very high, then you have actually a much stronger financial plan because if wages do get hurt, your variable expenses can be dropped pretty quickly. Then we also look at the net income. Typically we know if you have a net positive net income is if the account balance in your checkbook rises every month, if there's money left over. Um, if you do, that's good. What that net income can then do is then start to fund your balance sheet. That can go into your balance sheet, into your assets, and we start investing money from our net income into investments, either 401ks, IRAs, or taxable investments. In the early part of your career, we start with an income statement that builds the balance sheet. As we get further and further in our career and we start to retire, our balance sheet then has to feed our income statement. So here is where things come back and forth depending on your life cycle. When we look at the balance sheet, the things that we look at not like the income statement, we look at the assets and the rate of return of the assets. 
So if we have investments that earn 8%, and then we look at the liabilities, and the liabilities, suppose we have a credit card that is 12%. If our assets are earning 8% and our liabilities are earning 12%, our net worth is getting smaller on the balance sheet side. That's not a good thing. So we want to look at the rate of return of the assets, the rate of return of the liabilities, and how the net worth is growing. Is the income statement feeding the balance sheet, or does the balance sheet need to feed the income statement? So these are the, this is the coordination that we have to look at between your income statement and your balance sheet when you're developing a proper financial plan. Thanks for watching us on the whiteboard. If you have questions about Seabold Capital, you can find us on the web at www.seaboldcapital.com or at 630-548-9700. So until next time, we'll see you at the whiteboard.